Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 11 minutes before 8 is the time. Well, let's come back to our conversation. Having some transport issues, of course, yesterday, and let's put that now to Transport Secretary Grant Chaps, who joins me. We're going to be talking about great work that's happening with the Trans Pennine route upgrade in just a moment. But first, Secretary of State, can I ask you, there were, as you'll be aware, troubles with some railway lines. Uh, Vauxhall, I think, had buckled tracks. Why is that? What, what is the problem with our railway lines that would not seem to be the same issue in the south of France or Italy? Good morning. Yeah, morning. Uh, well, actually, I've been uh, talking to some of my colleagues across the uh, continent, and everyone is having significant issues at the right. moment. Um, obviously, in the UK, we are about to have probably today the hottest ever recorded temperature. Um, and put simply, our rail infrastructure, our, our transport infrastructure, in, in fact, the country's infrastructure, wasn't built to withstand 40 degrees because we haven't seen it before. And we are clearly going to have to make sure that that kind of standard of infrastructure is put in for the future uh, because we're going to see more of this happening by all accounts. Will we need to get to a point where most, if not all, railway carriages have some form of air conditioning, would you say, Secretary of State? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, actually, that's the way it's it's moving. So if you go on some of the uh, the newer trains, the Azumas, for example, the the, uh, the the 700s or 717s or 707s, for those who are train geeks like me, uh, you will find these these uh, lovely trains are air conditioned uh, and and properly heated for the winter. So trains are very much moving that way. We've seen it on the Elizabeth line and indeed the trains that will ultimately run on the Trans Pennine uh, route upgrade uh, that I'm announcing uh, today up to £11.5 billion pounds for faster trains between Manchester and Leeds. And, 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 and your... more on that in a moment, more on that. But just mm. finally on that, I'm not a train geek. What service then currently, what was it, the, the Zika trains? What, what, what service would Azuma, I find? Azuma, Azuma, Azuma my trains. apologies. They're, those those are 700s and, and, and 701s. <laughs> right. Who has got those currently in the country? Sorry, 800s and 801s. You uh, really well, do know your trains. Yeah. Where, where are they currently to be found, Mr Shapps, or are they actually just being effectively rolled out now? No, so so a lot of people, commuters in London, uh, will be familiar with, with trains which are air conditions, uh, for example, from my constituency in Welland Garden and Hatfield, the... The, the 717s run from there uh, into London. These are seamen um, trains. I, I went to uh, the factory the other week. The, these are trains which are so uh, beautifully built that they tell you when they're going to go wrong in advance. They almost tell you when they're going to need service and tell you to book them in next month and things like that. The, 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 you know, the, the infrastructure is getting better and better. What we need to do uh, is kind of you know, speed through improving it to be more resilient against some of this extreme weather, both hot and cold, that we're going to see much more of in, in the years to come. I know you're keen to tell listeners across the whole of the country, but particularly in the area, uh, what's happening for the Trans Pennine route upgrade. So do go ahead, Secretary of State. Yep. So at the moment, if you travel across the Pennines from, for example, Manchester to Leeds, that journey is nearly an hour. Uh, this upgrade that I've uh, talked about, which is a multi-year uh, major upgrade, uh, will mean that you'll travel from Manchester to, Le to Leeds in just over 30 minutes. So it's a huge improvement. Um, the sort of levelling up agenda that we've talked so much about in action. Uh, and it means that ultimately, actually, you'll be able to travel right across the, the north from, say, Liverpool to Warrington to Manchester to Leeds to York uh, and do so in great comfort, um, air conditioned as it happens, but also on uh, lines which have been electrified uh, uh, with um, new digital signalling and new tracks. So this is a massive improvement. Uh, all part of our nearly £100 billion upgrade to, uh, to to the railways that we announced recently in what we call the Integrated Rail Plan. And this is uh, this is part of it. So if you're anywhere around Manchester, Leeds, York, uh, this is coming your way to huge benefit. And this is being delivered solely by better rolling stock, is it? No, uh, this will be a combination of things. Primarily electrification of the line ah. all the way across. New lines added in. Uh, there are pinch points on the line uh, where there are perhaps just two tracks and we'll go up to three and four. Brand new railway uh, laid uh, in, in the longer run for this upgrade between Manchester and Marsden, which takes out to a bottleneck. And digital signalling. Uh, now, digital signalling, it means you get rid of the old Victorian signalling where you have you know, literally traffic lights spaced along the railway and you move to a system where the, uh, the the the, the signalling effectively moves into the in, into the cab for the train driver. Uh, they can see on the screen where they need to start and stop. You can fit more trains more safely into uh, a smaller 
stretch of track. Uh, so that's the way forward. We're about to upgrade the East Coast main line, large parts of that to digital signaling, and it will mean a more efficient railway. So there, it's, it's, there are lots of different things that will more or less halve the journey time from Manchester to Leeds across the Pennine for passengers uh, in the next 10 or so years. So that's the way forward there. What's the way forward for the Conservative Party? And can I put it to you that the four contenders that we are now in, we've not heard a lot about levelling up from them, Secretary of State. Is that a fair criticism? Um, uh, so you've got four different candidates in at the moment. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm supporting uh, Rishi. You are. Uh, and uh, he is a huge fan of, of uh, levelling up. He represents a, a northern seat, as it happens. Uh, and has not, not said a lot about me. it in these debates, though, has he? As, and neither have all, uh, any of his colleague, uh, colleagues either, have they? I wonder, do you sense it slipped a little bit down the agenda, Secretary of State? Uh, I, I actually, I think the interesting thing about the debate at the moment in Parliament is it's been... I think it's fair to say, largely a debate about how you run the economy. I think when it gets out of Parliament and into the country, so the last two, of which, of course, I hope that Rishi is is one of them. It's not there yet, but I very much hope he's one of the two. Uh, I think as the most experienced candidate, he's the person who um, would be able to step into the job as Prime Minister on day one and get on with that job. Um, and out in the country, of course, I think there's a much wider agenda that will be discussed, including things like um, how we ensure that no matter where you live in this country, you get the same opportunities. Uh, and I think that's a very basic principle, very, very important for, um, you know, for, for this country to ensure that your opportunities are not related to which part of the country you happen to be born in anymore. A couple of other matters just to explore with you. Public sector pay rises could be capped at a low percentage figure, around 5% to try and combat inflation. That, though, could lead to a lot of strikes, as you'll be aware, a lot of strikes, not just on the transport sector, uh, transport sector, Secretary of State. How concerned should my listeners be about this? Well, look, one thing we don't want to do is allow inflation to run out of control. When that happens, you get into a vicious circle uh, where you'll never... And it erodes people's income, it erodes people's savings. Um, and again, th this is where Rishi in particular has been very clear that what we need to do is grapple inflation. This is a spike going through the system caused, as we know, by Putin's war in Ukraine and the, uh, the, the big upset that that's had to, for example, fuel supplies. It's very important that we don't chase that inflation. Otherwise, we will permanently be poorer. Uh, and, and that's why a plan which um, gets us back on track as quickly as possible is important. Uh, and pay, pay, pay rises will need to reflect that. That rail strike is all going to happen in about eight days' time? Uh, yeah, well, I don't think it needs to. Uh, look, we, we, we have railway workers, which I'm proud to say are very well paid in this country. I see that uh, the previous strike by the RMT is being joined now by ASLEF. Those are the train drivers. But it would interest your listeners to know that the average, the median salary for a train driver is nearly £60,000 a year. Now, you know, governments have to make difficult decisions about whether you pay more to doctors and nurses care workers uh, and I, I think that you know train drivers have a reasonably good deal at £60,000 a year. Uh, they can be paid more, they will be paid more but we need some modernisation in return. For example more people are using our trains at the weekend than before coronavirus but some of these contracts don't require train drivers, some of whom only need to work four days a week to work at the weekends and on Sundays in particular at all. So uh, it's done in a voluntary way on some lines. And uh, we, we can't carry on running a railway service like that in the 21st century where it's voluntary as to whether you turn up to do the job or not. Last couple of points. It would appear the sense was that the Prime Minister made his final appearance in the House of Commons yesterday. If that is the case, how shall we remember him? Well, I think he'll be remembered as somebody who was very good with some of the big picture stuff. So, you know, he got Brexit done. He got the vaccine rolled out in this country before uh, elsewhere, got us out uh, of the lockdown, the first in Europe, has led in the war in Ukraine in uh, defending uh, the West against Putin's aggression. So I think on the very big calls, he'll be remembered for those things. Uh, you know, to be blunt, he, he got some of the smaller stuff 
uh, wrong and and, uh, and and disastrously, you know, from his point of view, of course. Because it wasn't that long ago you were defending him on this show, though, Mr. Shapps. Well, I always thought, weeks. and I still and I still think, Nick, that on balance, um, you know, w- w- with the big things, and for example, take the AstraZeneca, uh, Oxford AstraZeneca drug that he pushed for development, pushed for the factories, pushed to get it out first. Uh, I see that that has been used to vaccinate more people, not just in this country, but globally than any other. And it's saved literally millions of lives. Now, I, I think on the, those very big calls, uh, he was an exceptional prime minister. It, clearly, it is also true um, that, you know, in the end, uh, not looking after some of the small details uh, is one of the reasons why he has right. left office much sooner than he would have done. Talk about leaving office lastly, and currently as we speak, still in office, is the Police and Crime Commissioner for Nottinghamshire. This despite the fact that Caroline Henry has been caught speeding five times in less than three months, including two offences on consecutive days, and has now appeared before the courts and has been sentenced. Uh, She happens to be a Conservative. She must stand down, mustn't she? I'm not familiar with the actual story itself, but um, I have to say, uh, from your description, uh, that that does sound uh, quite extreme for a Police and Crime Commissioner can't stay in post can she mr shams well I'll, I'll leave i'll leave that to others but i would have thought that uh, and i haven't uh, say i haven't been tracking that story but i have to say uh, i think it is important that you know uh, somebody who's in that position uh, is seen to be upholding uh, the the law given that they're in charge of the law grateful as ever for your time thank you transport secretary grant shaps appearing here on lbc where at eight o'clock the news is next on your radio on global player and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, it's expected to be the hottest day on record for the UK. Forecasters say temperatures will exceed 40 Celsius for the first time. Weatherman John Ketley